Welcome back, everybody. It is quarter to seven. Now, this week, the Zondo Commission heard of uh, groundbreaking testimonies from five individuals with former National Treasury Head of Communications, Pumza Magdanda, the first in line. Mzwanele Manyi followed, traversing from his time as the head of government communication and information systems to when he was the owner of the New Age newspaper. Now, Gweta Mantasha explained the ANC's meeting with the banks after they closed their Oak Bay accounts. Then came Mwako Ramatlodi, who occupied ministerial positions in the departments of mineral resources and the public service administration and uh, yesterday Cheryl Carolas in her capacity as the former chairperson of the SAA board. Nomboni Sokasa is here to round up some of the key moments that arose from the state capture inquiry this week. Very good morning to you Nomboni. So thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Okay. Thank you for having me. Uh, so much has been said and done about uh, state capture, whether it exists or not. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've heard, we've seen political theatrics playing out at the State Capture Commission and with uh, some groundbreakings and sometimes earth-shattering revelations were made. Uh, do we get a picture now of what state capture is and who orchestrated it? Because now the, the pieces of the puzzle are now coming back together. I, I think we are. I think, um, but I think there's still quite a lot that is going to come. But I think that... Um Obviously, it's starting to emerge that you're not talking about isolated incidents of corruption, mm. that you're talking about a process which actually manipulated um, government processes, which um, also used the authority of the office of the president um, to try and facilitate that. And I think that we are getting a picture of just how prevalent um, state capture was yeah. or is. What are some of the astounding or significant moments or the information that have been revealed that stood out for you particularly in this, in this commission? Well, I think when um, Ramatlodi said that the president basically um, ceded the office um, for, 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 for the benefit of the Guptas, when he gave executive authority, I think that was, um, that was very startling yeah because then you you are seeing how institutions and of course if the head of state decides to back a project like state capture mm -hmm. and lends his authority and 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 you know that as a minister you don't only serve at the pleasure of a president you serve at the pleasure to the extent that you can obey and you can carry out instructions, mm. whether direct or indirect, to loot public resources. I think that's, that's been a, yeah. an indictment. And speaking of uh, Ramachori, uh, while he, he went to town and went into greater detail, uh, just explaining how, um, how much enduring, um, or rather, uh, yeah, how much enduring he suffered at the hands of former President Jacob Zuma. And uh, some of the media comments followed about uh, his conflict of interest, being the Minister of Mineral Resources, yet at the same time owning about 20 million rand of platinum shares. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that one of the things that, have gone, that are very clear and that always are obvious perhaps to, to many people is that there is never somebody who is completely 100% beyond um, question. There are some, but I think that often, you know, some of our heroes have got um, clay, feet of clay. And, um, and I think, however, that those who say Ram Ramachodi is conflicted have the responsibility of saying exactly how is he conflicted and how are the decisions that he made benefited his own um, you know, personal interest. But it does not mean that what he says must be invalidated. It doesn't mean that what he says should not be taken into account. I think that he's made very important um, statements and I think that the Zondo Commission needs to investigate those. Cheryl Carolas uh, spoke of a time while she was still the board chairperson of the SAA board and she made very uh, damning allegations uh, against uh, uh, Mr. Malusi Giga. But were you at all surprised at this? Well, um, not quite. I mean, we, we have, you know, some of the stuff that is coming up, we have seen either in Gupta emails or in conversations and debates um, before. We must remember that Cheryl Carolas resigned. Yes. Um, together with other members of the board. And when she resigned, when they resigned, she said very clearly that their reputations 
had been dragged through the mud. Yes. So, so it's important also to, to remember to try and look back at some of the tensions, some of the conversations, and some of the events that were unfolding at the, at the times in which these people were in office. Mm. And she also loaded Praveen Kodan uh, for appearing before the, com the commission. So I'm quite curious to know if the divisions or affirmations as a matter of ideology versus values, or is it more complex than that? Well, I, I think that you can, I mean, I, I think that someone like Cheryl um, chooses very carefully the kinds of, um, you know, um, things that he puts, she puts her name behind. So I think what she was doing with, um, with Pravin is, of course, in the light of uh, incessant attacks on Pravin Gordon. Um, I think what, what um, Carolus was saying was, listen, I, I, I acknowledge your courage. I acknowledge yeah. that what you did was um, not easy. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's factional battle. doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean that it's ideology necessarily. But I think here you're talking about values. And, uh, and I think Carolus was saying to the extent that you have come here, the extent that you've been subjected to this, to the extent that you have tried to stop some of these processes, I acknowledge you and I salute you for that. Pumza Makanda also painted a very uh, strange picture of a minister who arrived at Treasury with two advisors, yet they, <laughs> don't, they didn't seem to know each other. That's, uh, that for me was quite odd. Oh yeah, well that was already, um, if you remember, Fuzile had already started there when he said that, he, uh, when he said that um, Kodongwana, had said to him, you will receive a Gupta minister and the minister will come with his advisors, but he will not know the advisors. So I think what Makanda said later, in fact, was a confirmation of what, got wrong, of, of what um, Fuzile had said earlier. So here you see that even some of the ministers who, who were in positions of power didn't necessarily have the authority that came with that office. You had uh, Ramatloji, for example, saying that um, President Zuma, it was, it was um, revealed that he had two secretaries. One was at the Gupta um, family who controlled his diary. And whenever they wanted him, he would come running. So you do get the sense that power, and this, this is the major indictment on President Zuma, and this I hope he will clarify when he gets to the commission, because basically he lent the authority and status yes. of the office to the state capture process, particularly in the interest of the Guptas. Yeah. And you know, the, uh, the buzzword Gupta ministers has been doing the runs since the yeah. commission started. And uh, it's quite interesting how all of these things are now coming out now. Uh, was there perhaps a chance that we wouldn't have heard about this had it not been for the commission? Well, I think that quite a lot of so far what we are seeing are people who are going to the commission who have in one way or the other before actually tried to do something. So maybe not... Um, enough as, as we would think, but it's very easy to make that when you're not part of that process. If I were there, I don't know if I would have the courage of somebody like um, um, uh, Gordon, for example. I don't know if I would have the courage of someone like um, Fuzile. For, but I think what we are seeing is people who had tried to stop the mess in different ways, who are now able to talk to the nation and say, this is the full extent of what was going on. And another officer who um, wasn't quite clear as to his views with regards to whether state capture existed or not was Greta Mantasha, and he told the commission that uh, things began to fall apart when the issue of state capture began to manifest. Just how much was his testimony revealing of the depth and the challenge they face as a party? Well, I mean, I think that um, Greta Mantasha has been trying to balance he, you know, being firstly the Secretary General then um, and, and, and being the Minister now yes. um, and now also being the National Chair of the ANC. And being, so I think he, 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 everything that he's saying is also in the interest of trying to say, listen, we were not part of this kind of damage to this extent. But 
um, he's still going to go back to the commission. The ANC is still going to have to account to the commission, uh, to, in fact, most importantly to the people of this country and say what it is that they did, why they didn't do certain things, why they, they um, opposed votes of no confidence in President Zuma on eight, I mean, eight times. So I think that obviously in a process like this, you will find the interests of the party having to be safeguarded sometimes. And I think that that's one of the major um, questions that the ANC is going to have to answer to the people of this country. Mm. Why is it that they used the mandate that they received from people of this country to in fact facilitate turn a blind eye or become instruments in a process that in fact robbed people of this country. And having said that, uh, Gwede Mantashe also said that, well, he never met the Guptas on his own. And then he later said that, uh, you know, he did meet them. They came to the Tuli House and met them in his capacity <laughs> while he was still the Secretary General. Uh, this paints him or he comes across as very uh, someone who's very inconsistent. And the very same inconsistency that cost Ntlantlanen his job. Isn't this interesting? Well, I mean, I, I think that though... Um, we, we need to give him an opportunity, wait for him to go to the commission. And I think that the, 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 the Gwede montage that we are seeing now is not really different from the Gwede montage of the last um, um, eight to nine years who was montaging. So I think that balance of having to, to, to say this but not that, yes. um, I think has been <laughs> his trademark. But I think when he goes to the state capture inquiry, we will see exactly why is it that he adopted these um, ostensibly contradictory positions often. Okay, so uh, as, as the commission continues, are we see more heads rolling or is, it, is that it? Well, I mean, the th here's the thing that is very important. What happens, what comes after this? Because if heads do not roll, if people do not face trial, if people do not go to prison, if people do not um, lose their jobs, particularly those who are occupying public office, all of this would have been entertainment. Right. What is important is that in the final analysis, people must face the consequences of their actions. All right, Nomboni, so thanks for this great chat. Eh? Thank we you. appreciate your time. Thank you. Many thanks to political analyst and social activist Nomboni Sokasa for rounding up the state capture inquiry this week. All right, this is Morning Live. Let's go for an ad break and we'll have new more news at 7 o'clock.